By now it's tradition, I have to start the PC hardware news video with the tweet from Copite, because so many of you complain about it. Because yes, it's leaks and rumors. Some of the stuff we have in PC hardware news is leaks and rumors. Some of it is official announcements and all of that. But if you want the latest and greatest, the rumor reel, rumor reel, <laughs> rumor mill is involved. So again, this is not official from NVIDIA. This is Copite. He's got things right in the past. Doesn't mean this will be right. All of the usual stuff. What's he doing today? Well, he is downgrading the RTX 4080 specs that he has given previously. Now again, just the fact that specs change from a leaker does not mean that it's people just making things up. It can be that finalized decisions are being made. And so you can have the same, you know, hardware design and just enable or disable certain amounts of the chip for certain models, all of that. Most of this is all staying the same, still saying the RTX 4080 will be on the AD103 chip, not the AD102 chip, which will give us things like the uh, 4090. Uh, still thinking it's a 256-bit, 16 gigabytes of RAM at 21 gigabit per second GDDR6X speeds with 420 watts of power. He's also keeping the same Time Spy Extreme number, which I believe is just an estimate. Although if you look at articles like um, uh, this video cards article reporting on, on this, um, they're saying that he said before that these are not estimates, but actual test results. I don't know, guys. <laughs> ah, let me move out of the way. Ah, this is a good chart, at least, saying that uh, basically the previous rumored specs was that the RTX 4080 would be the, on the AD103 uh, GPU, but have 80 SMs, but this is downgrading it down to 76. The previous one would have given us 10,240 CUDA cores, and this brings it down to 9,728. But like I said, his performance estimate is still remaining at around 15,000 in Time Spy Extreme. So if we want to go along with that, the WCCF tech article on this, which ah, makes me inconveniently have to move myself again, uh, is giving us a chart of Time Spy Extreme graphics scores so you can get an idea of where this falls in relation to other products. So if this ends up being true, that would mean the RTX 4080 is significantly more powerful than an RTX 3090 Ti, but will also be significantly less powerful than an RTX 4090 if we believe the RTX 4090 results that we've been given by the same leaker, Copite. And so that would mean that there's a larger product segmentation here between the 80 and the 90 class in this generation than there was in the previous generation, as we can see down, uh, uh, down here, if you look at the 3000 series. Um, in general, this is interesting, but as I said, leaks rumors. Here's what you know we're expecting based on the tweets but we don't know for sure. And again, rumored launch dates are October for the 4090, and then we really don't know for the 4080 and 4070. Uh, could be spaced out by a month and get them all out this year, but again, there have been rumors of uh, delaying some of the later GPUs to try to continue to sell the 3000 series. We'll see what happens with that. Speaking of upcoming launches, how about AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7000 series CPUs? I know it's confusing for some people that AMD's upcoming GPUs are also the 7000 series. It's just how it is this time around, guys. Um, this is a leaked performance number for the 7900X, which would be your 12 core 24 thread CPU, replacing the 5900X in this uh, upcoming lineup. And it's uh, the leak is showing a 50% cache bandwidth upgrade versus Zen 3. Now it's 50, uh, not 50% of it, it's 50% more, uh, just to make sure you're reading the percentage correctly. This seems to be from HXL on Twitter and being reported by uh, WCCF Tech. This seems to be the ADA64 cache and memory benchmark results. So this isn't a... Uh, you know, gaming benchmark saying 50% performance increase. It's a cache, um, cache test in that particular result. So interesting. Now we are pretty certain now that it's, that these are coming out on September 15th. Now, I don't know if that means that the entire lineup is coming out on September 15th. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if it was all spaced out a bit. 
Um, but MSI, when talking about their X670 motherboards, have once again used the September 15th number. So we are pretty sure now, lots of leaks and rumors, uh, <laughs> that September 15th is the magic date for this upcoming lineup. And ah, to kind of review, as I've already reported, uh, the expected clock speeds and power numbers and um, you know, cache and memory and all of that for this lineup. Basically, we're getting the same core and thread count as we had previously with some significant clock speed boosts, including uh, more power draw, especially on the Ryzen 9 chips, and then a uh, small boost to the L2 cache with the same L3 cache. Now, L2 cache increases can have a significant impact on gaming performance, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, so most of the performance gains in gaming will come from the clock speed boosts with a little bit of extra cache. Um, not huge IPC gains overall from the architecture change. Now, um, the, like I said, this came out when we we're talking about motherboards. I'm not gonna get into all of the, the details of every single motherboard here, but feel free to check my description where I will include the link to this article. But there was the AMD Meet the Expert event where we had board partners show off all of their motherboards. So Asus, ASRock, Gigabyte, uh, MSI, all showing off some, oh, and Biostar. Uh, showing off a whole bunch of new motherboards and features and all of that. Like I said, I cannot dive in to all of the details on all of this in the, and get this video out in a reasonable length of time. Uh, but uh, yeah, feel free to take a closer look there yourself. Now in further AMD CPU news, the Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5000 series is now available on the DIY market. You could already get a, a hold of these uh, but not in the DIY market. So that's the difference here. Now, the thing is with these, if you need one of these, you probably already know that you're in the market for a 64 core uh, CPU. <laughs> Most of you are not, and they cost $6,500. So there you go. It looks like Hardware Unboxed already has a review out there. Uh, again, and you know, you don't have to get the 64 core version, you know, um, but you know, you, you could save money and go down to a $2,400, 24 core, 48 thread chip, you know, uh, if you're very budget conscious. No, I, I'm joking, but you know, people who need these need these, but um, gamers, which is I think the most uh, majority of my viewers here, you don't need to throw one of these in your gaming system, okay? Uh, we're also seeing... Um, specs leak out for a Ryzen Pro 5000 uh, series specs, uh, including like a 5945 with 12 cores. So if you start seeing some weird numbers like this, these 45s at the end here, it's looking like um, uh, these will be launching. I don't feel like these are going into the DIY market. I think these are going into OEM type systems. Um, but just keep in mind that these specs will not you know, these are these are going to be a little bit different there. That's that's what I was looking for. Uh, you know, a little different than the rest of the lineup here, right? Because like we'd expect a 5950X to be 16 core 32 thread, whereas this 5945 Pro series is 12 core 24 thread, which is more lining up with the threads on a 5900X, not a 5950. So anyway, keep your eye on those specs if you see them uh, listed in pre-builts and whatnot. Um, that you're taking a look at. Now, and more CPU news, but jumping over to Intel, we are seeing the Core i9-13900K with some pretty crazy boosts and performance speeds in leaked benchmarks. In Geekbench 5, we're seeing it performing with up to 5.8 gigahertz speeds, uh, giving it a 54% faster multi-core than the Ryzen 9 5950X. Uh, which is a pretty big bump. If you want to see the specific scores here, Video Cards has nicely placed them into a chart here uh, where we have a bunch of Geekbench leaks on these upcoming um, uh, 13th gen chips from Intel. So we can see this 13900K with the uh, 5.8 gigahertz speed 
uh, with some uh, pretty high single core and multi core results, but you can see how that compares, for example, to a different 13900K engineering sample that was only going up to 5.5 gigahertz boosts, right? So we'll see how the actual chip performs, you know, at stock speeds and overclocked when we get the final versions out. And again, engineering samples don't always line up perfectly in performance to the final chip. Um, so, and also, when are we expected to get these? Because we're expecting to get the Ryzen 7000 series from AMD on September 15th, which I'm very confident about. I'm less confident, but there are a lot of leaks um, showing that we'll see the announcement for the 13th gen Intel chips on September 28th, but the official release happening on October 17th. And we'll probably start out with the K-series chips uh, being the 13900K, 700K, and 600K. So that's the release plan for those. And we're also seeing another leak of the 13900K um, with the 5.8 gigahertz speed, but this time in Cinebench with the unlimited power setting up to 350 watts. So crazy power draws and all that, but it's looking like at those power draws, it's up to 67% faster than the 5950X in Cinebench. So that's even more of an uplift over the 5950X than we saw in the Geekbench result. Uh, but again, the 5950X isn't really what these will be up against once because um, it's looking like the 7,000 chips from AMD will be out before the 13th gen from Intel. But you can see some Cinebench results um, over here if you want to see how that stacks up. And this is, again, sourced from WCCF Tech. In more Intel CPU news, we're seeing reported here from video cards that Intel will be discontinuing their premium packaging designs for their i9-12900K and i9-10980XE. A lot of times their i9 series uh, has some super fancy package designs. So if you buy one of these now, uh, don't expect to get your really cool package. So, <laughs> you know, the CPU will still perform the same. Now, uh, speaking of Intel, but moving into the GPU side of things, we've been hearing so many rumors about troubles in Intel Arcland. Are they canceling all of that? Well, Igor's lab has uh, dug into this with a lot of his contacts and is basically to sum up this article saying that, you know, Intel's goal with these board partners is to push them mostly to focus on OEM system integrators rather than the DIY market. But the problem is if you can't find system integrators who are interested in dealing with the uh, Intel Arc product, that can make it hard to sell these things, which can make it a difficult proposition uh, for <laughs> uh, board partners to actually want to produce these cards. So uh, he won't give specifics, but he's saying that at least one of the big board partners has even stopped the production of Intel cards completely due to quality concerns, uh, which brings back to like, okay, pulling the plug on the Intel chips. I mean, this like, so it, it's not that these are all done for or anything like that, but it's looking like some board partners are not happy with this situation. Um, he's saying that other board partners have at least capped their marketing activities, and it does not look as if there will be any real launch offensive from the board partners in the time window he mentioned for the launch. And what will uh, really arrive on the market will be seen in the next few weeks. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I think what's basically going on is there's some concerns about what kind of, you know, they need to be able to sell these at a reasonable price. They're worried about with the quality of the drivers and all of that, are they gonna have a lot of RMAs, which are costly and I don't know. We'll see what happens, but we are seeing Intel's uh, ARC A380 Challenger uh, launched and reviewed by themselves from ASRock. In other words, ASRock has uh, announced their Intel ARC A380 GPU and has actually tested it themselves giving 3D mark benchmarks as well as gaming benchmarks. Now it's important to note that the gaming benchmarks that they released are mostly DX12 modern new games where the ARC drivers are best, you know, have the best performance. So keep that in mind. Again, they're trying to sell their own card and all of that. You can feel free to dig into this article uh, for some uh, specifics. And it's also launching in China at the moment. So, you know, uh, Chinese translations on the uh, specific games and all of that. 
Uh, and they're also not really giving it up against other specific GPUs, so it's hard to tell exactly what this performance means. So I'm not going to dwell on these benchmark numbers too much, and we've already seen ARC A380 reviews. But ASRock used to be an exclusive AMD GPU partner, so it's interesting to see them getting into the ARC business here. Now MSI is also showing off their uh, ARC A380 low-profile graphics card. And it looks like this is um, uh, being uh, featured in a uh, in a pre-built. So they have MSI pre-built available in three different configurations, uh, each using the same Arc A380 graphics cards. It's nice to see a low-profile design and all of that. Um, and then we're also seeing Acer gaming PCs with Intel Arc A380 GPUs now available for pre-order. And uh, we're seeing that uh, this so far, uh, according to this video cards article, seems to be the only desktop GPU that Intel has greenlighted for sales outside of China. The pricing on these listings, and especially compared to the RTX 3060 versions that they list with similar specs, seem a little bit strange, a little bit high. Um, so I don't know what we'll see from this, but I don't want to dwell on this, guys, because quite frankly, I'm not nearly as interested in ARC GPUs as I used to be. <laughs> But we will be seeing a, a Lenovo introducing a Pro 27 all-in-one PC with Intel Arc A370M graphics. And they're, uh, you know, giving some performance claims in gaming. And the most interesting is that they're, you know, claiming some uh, pretty good performance in some professional applications in this all-in-one PC. So, hey, there's that. And um, we're also seeing that Micron is... Uh, finally entering mass production on their 24 gigabit per second GDDR6X memory. And we could see this on some upcoming RTX 40 series GPUs. Um, and so that would be, uh, we're not expecting this, at least according to getting back to leaked specs, uh, leaked specs point to most of them still being the 21 gigabit per second but we have seen rumors of some kind of Titan or 4090 Ti or something like that with 24 gigabit per second memory. And that would, uh, you know, line up with this mass production happening here. Uh, so we'll, I guess, stay tuned and find out. I hope all of you have an excellent day.